Howdy. Today, I'm going to be going over the basics of MIPS procedures, I'm explaining what they are, how they work, and even doing a simple example of how a Java procedure will look in MIPS assembly language. All right, let's learn some MIPS. Okay, you might be wondering, what is a procedure? Well, let me tell you. A stored subroutine that performs a specific task on the parameters with which it is provided. Say, huh? All right. It's mainly used to structure programs, make programs easier, easier to understand and reuse. Basically, it's a function. If you know what that is, you're ahead of the game. If you don't, let me give you a little metaphor. It's uh, like a secret agent. Um, you get the secret plan, acquire resources like you know, bullets, gadgets, whatever. Perform the task go in boom do what secret agents do you know fire a couple and then uh, copy your tracks and return to the starting point All right you might be wondering what a terrible analogy well let me explain a little bit it's like you put the parameters where the procedure can access them transfer control to the procedure acquire the storage resources needed to and perform the desired task yeah, then put the result value in the place where the calling program can access it and uh, return control to the point of origin. In order to do all this in MIPS, you're going to need some registers. You need, so what you have is four argument registers to pass the parameters. And if you have used higher level programming, you know that it's kind of like here it's int x and int y in this function. You also have two value registers to return values, which are v0, v1. So here, you know, that'd be like returning x, which x would be your v0 or v1. And then also, you have your return address register, which returns you to the point of origin. So you might be wondering, how am I going to jump to a register? How do I know what to save there? Well. Luckily, MIPS has the jump and link instruction for you. It, uh, it's like jump, just the regular J, but it jumps to an address. But it also saves the address of the following instruction, PC plus 4, into register RA. So here's a little example for you. Say uh, you jump and link to procedure. And then, uh, so you won't be executing this. You're uh, jumping into the procedure right there. You do what you need to do in the procedure. And then you jump register to the return address. So after you do that, it would pop you right here, right here on add, and you continue as you were. So that jump register, it's an unconditional jump to the address specified in the register. So it's gonna come in come in handy when uh, you use procedures in MIPS. Now to explain a little bit on how this whole thing works in your program, you have the callers and callees. A caller is the program that instigates a procedure and provides the necessary stuff. So uh, pretty much it is uh, putting the parameter values in A0 through A3 and then it uses jump and link to jump to the procedure. Procedure X in this case. And the callee, which is procedure X, performs the calculations, places the results in V0 and V1, and then returns control to the use to the caller using JR jump register. All right. When the caller calls the procedure, he wants the value returned, but also wants all the other registers to be how they were before the procedure was called. You don't want all the registers to have random values after procedure. To fix this, we have the stack, which is a last in first out queue. And MIPS is register 29 or SP for stack pointer. And it's adjusted by one word when register is pushed or popped to the stack. It grows from higher addresses to lower addresses. So adding to the stack shrinks the stack. So pushing, you subtract from stack pointer. And pop, you add to the stack pointer. Now all this seems fine and dandy, but uh, to help you understand a little bit more, let me go to little example. It's going to be our leaf procedure, which means 
it doesn't call itself it's not nested so it's just a single action so here's you know some code that you might recognize if you've done higher level programming the hard part is converting to assembly uh, we have our uh, as you saw there we have a uh, G, H, I, and J, which are parameter values, which we'll store in A0, A1, A2, and A3. And then for F, we're going to store in the saved register S0. So to start any procedure, you need the title of the function. So we have leaf example, which is start a procedure. All right, and now down back when I was talking about all that stack and saving and preserving, we're going to get into the nitty gritty right here. So we need to save the registers used by the procedure. In this procedure, we are going to be using T0, T1, and S0 to do our calculations. In order to do that, we need to add negative 12 to the stack, so we're subtracting 12. And it's 12 because there's three items, each a word, so it's 3 times 4, and it's 12, 12 bytes that we're subtracting from the stack pointer. And then you store each one onto the stack. So we're saving T1 on the stack, T0, and S0 on the stack. Uh, to uh, have a little bit better illustration of that, let me uh, show you stack during a leaf example. So before, this is what the stack looks like. There's nothing on it. And then we throw on T0, T1, and S0. So it's grown downwards as you can see from high address to low address and then afterwards we clean it up get rid of all that and put it back on there so uh, let's uh, go into further detail during the procedure we got our execution so if you're familiar with MIPS you should be able to understand this pretty well so this is all our stuff during the done during the procedure we uh, add G and H put it in T0 add I and J put it in T1 and then we subtract the two, T0 minus T1, store it into S0. Simple as that. And uh, so in order to return S0 to the caller, we're going to do, remember those value registers from earlier? We have to copy S0 to value register V0. In order to do that, you just do simple S0 plus 0, and boom, you got yourself a return value. But before we can return, you must clean up your mess. You gotta restore the originals so that after it returns to the caller, the caller doesn't know anything's been changed except for he now has the return value. In order to do that, we have to put the three old values on from the stack onto the registers. So we load the word, offset zero for S0, load T0, and load T1. So now everything's back how it was, and then we fix the stack by adding 12 to it. You add to the stack to shrink it. And remember, 3 times 4 because they're all words, so it's 12. Alright, and now finally, we're returning. The procedure ends with the jump register using the return address. So here you got the JR, RA. So it's jumping back to the calling routine, or actually right after what was the calling routine. And look at you, you've now written a procedure. Congratulations. And uh, let's just look at the overview of that, all put together. You can see the sections, you got the, the start, and then you got us preserving it right here. And then we're executing, and then we're adding it to the return value, restoring it before we return, and then finally, we're returning. Everything is neat and tidy like it was before the procedure is called, just like our spy from the beginning, except we have the goods. We have the return value. And a little side note, technically, we didn't have to say registers T0 and T1 because those are temporary, and the caller doesn't expect you to save those. But I just wanted to show a little better how to save to the stack. So technically, you would only need to save S0 right here because save registers and stack and uh, return address are the only things that are preserved after a call. Um, also, you might uh, 
might see other examples. Didn't have time to go into nested procedures, but you can see those in my next video. In, that, in such a case, you would need to return address or save the return address on the stack. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Enjoy.